And so let's pray now. Father God in heaven, we thank you for bringing us here this morning. What a blessing to be here, to know, to know that you're with us. You never leave us or forsake us. It's such a blessing to know that you love us more than our sin. And what a blessing to know that, Father, you sent Jesus, and Jesus, you came as the Lamb of God. You who knew no sin, you became our sin. What a blessing. You went to the cross, gave your blood and your body, paid the price, took the wrath upon yourself. And then you rose from the dead and walked out of that grave on the third day, defeating the power of sin and death in our lives and making us born again, born again, children of the loving Father God in heaven. Our name's written in the book of life for eternity. And Lord, we thank you that you've given us your Holy Spirit to guide and comfort us. And so today, we pray that your Holy Spirit, your Spirit would guide us through these wonderful passages in Romans chapter 12, the grace gifts. What a blessing. What a blessing to say that. Your grace. What a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the title today, um, and I had the same title on that. Uh, when you guys see the uh, notes go out and uh, you'll see the YouTube messages each week go out, I, the, grace, uh, the grace gifts. And yet I went through all kinds of different things. And now we're going to get to that point where this really is, is important. Okay. I want you to remember when we read this, as I read the 12th chapter of Romans, that the word grace means unmerited favor, okay? Put it in your mind. Grace is unmerited favor. That means unmerited means you don't deserve it, okay? You didn't earn it. It's un, un, undeserved. So let's read this. Uh, Romans 12, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. You will know what his will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. That's the key to everything today. I want you to listen to that statement. Do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought but rather think of yourselves with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body and many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. Again, we have different gifts. It's very important to hear this. Different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal and keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony, one with another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Again, Remember this one at the top. Don't think of yourself more highly than you should. And then at the bottom, it says here, do not be conceited. Verse 17, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, underline, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. I want you to hear this. Do not take revenge. Leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. 
On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father, for the reading of your word and the power of your Holy Spirit that gives us this wonderful truth in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Originally, the very first title that I used when we started this, and what the reason that we started studying the 12th chapter of Romans, which is one of the most, in my heart, in my mind, one of the most important passages in Scripture, is if we know who we are in Christ, we know who Christ is, the gospel, right? We know what it means to be, to have Christ in you, the hope of glory. And we know what it means that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead, and we feel we know that we're going to be in heaven. We know we're going to be with the Lord, okay? So we're bulletproof here. Do you understand? This is the way it is. You're going to live your life. You're going to get old. You're going to have all kinds of things happening to you. But hey, they can't take you out. Jesus said, I'm the, the what? The resurrection, the life. Even if you die, you don't die. You go from life to life. And by the way, don't get all weird about it because when you go from this life to the next life, it's you're going to be so glad it's way better. So don't be all freaked out about it. I'll give you an example. I, I, used, I had a teenage son and a teenage daughter, but I'll stick with the sons. And I was a teenager. Okay, so here I am. Let's say I'm 14 or 15, whatever, 16. My dad, we were, we were construction people, okay? We, we didn't, my dad didn't have a job. He just went out and found jobs. He was a jobber, okay? So he'd find out jobs and he'd take his, we were the work crew, my brother and I, you know? So Mike's over here, he's 13 years old, just scrumbling around. And I'm 16 or 17, and I could drive. So I'm out there, and he puts us out on the job. And we didn't go, and go oh, you want this? And back then, when you when you did uh, uh, gas lines, you know, gas lines, there, it was it was this galvanized pipe, this thick. It didn't bend, you understand? And it had to be a foot underground. And you would do these gas lines in the backyards of somebody to do the swimming pools. We'd have to go. 20 yards this way, 20 feet this way, and then 40 feet that way, and do the gas line from the front all the way back. And it had to be that deep, cleaned up, and it had to be perfectly straight. Do you understand? Now, I don't know if you've ever tried to dig a ditch. And that, because you get this deep, it's hard. Sometimes it's impossible. And we had picks. And I mean, so we'd work all day. And we could work all day, and my dad would show up and say, what are you doing? It's got to be straight. It, it doesn't bend. And we ended up having to put the, the, you know, the, the, the line down and put it down and, and do that and, and do the whole thing. And, and you think about this. I think about what it means to do something on purpose. That when you and I have the opportunity to learn and I just didn't want to do it. I just didn't want, I wanted to rebel. I didn't want to do it my father's way. I just wanted to do whatever I wanted to do. And then I come to this point here and he urges us as brothers and sisters to offer ourselves. He wants us to look clearly into the word of God. And here we are, we're ready to just break off and do it our own way. We just don't want to do it down the plumb line. You remember the uh, in the you remember back when Zerubbabel went back to rebuild you know the temple and everything and they talked about the plumb line and setting it down and building things. Do you want to look at God's way and follow Him and turn away from your own way, or do you want to do it your own your own way? It's like a teenage boy, you know, rebelling against his father. And you know what? When it's all done. This is a problem nowadays, but in my day, this is the way it is. It was either my dad's way or my dad's way. Okay. Because I didn't get back in the, and, and it wasn't like he beat me or anything or was upset. It's just, I couldn't get back in the pickup truck to go home because we were 85 miles away and we had to do the job. And if you didn't do the job, you didn't get to go home. You didn't get to home. You didn't get to have any dinner. And, you know, it's, and you end up sometimes redoing it. And my dad would work me and he would make it and we'd do it right. And, you know, after doing that 20 feet in the wrong way, in that hard dirt out there by, you know, Ridgecrest and thinking about, am I, I, I can't, you know, the next time I did it, 
guess what? It was straight, okay? So therefore, here's what happens. So here we got it. By nature, you're a rebel. I, did, I know some of you guys are sort of wimpy rebels. I mean, you didn't really do anything. You thought about it, but you know, you're a rebel. Everybody's a rebel, okay? Some guys don't have the, and I'm not allowed to talk that way, but don't have the guts to do the things that a rebel does. They just think about doing them, okay? Or they follow along behind a guy who does it, right? And you, you look at that uh, last night or the night before, you look at those people in Chicago, they were running around in the streets and they were, you know, there was a couple people, believe it or not, there's like three or four people that started that, okay? The, the real, the guys who actually started it to get it going and everybody sort of followed them and got into the deal, right? You pick up any one or two of those guys and get them separate all by themselves and they wimp out. They just hit the dirt, okay? But you got the people that get them all going and get them all jacked up. That gas station thing they did in... Uh, in Compton or whatever, they took over the gas station, right? They blew it apart. There's a few people that get that going. You know what I mean? They jack it up and they get it going. And what 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 we're what we are learning is that there is a spirit in man. There's a spirit, and this spirit inside of us is is it can be going one way or it can go the other way. All right. And God says that He came so that you could do what? That spirit of rebellion needs to die. That's yourself, okay? That's who you want to be, to be your own self, right? So that spirit needs to die, and Christ needs to live. And that's what it means to be a Christian, to be a born-again child of God. You have to be born again. You have to die to self and be born to Christ. And that's what this is all about. He urges us, brothers, therefore, because of what Jesus did, this is what he wants to do. So when we look at this, this is so important, that when we look at this, we're going to learn that we're all, that none of us are the same. This is important. Remember the gifts he said? We all don't have the same gifts. Now, that's a mistake that a lot of people teaching, they come up with, and everybody's supposed to have this gift and that gift, and never, you know, but everybody doesn't have the same gift because we're a body. We, we're together. And so what we do is if we can turn from this rebel that's in us. So when you look on TV, you can't, I mean, those people are doing bad stuff, and you got to, be against the bad stuff, but each of those individual kids, if you put them in a room all by themselves and you were talking to them for a period of time and got to know them, these kids are just, they're just people. They're just, and you need to remember not to hate these people. Do you understand? Because it just easily could be you. And I don't know in what form in your life it was you at one time doing whatever it is you did. You little sneaky little person doing whatever you, maybe nobody knew about what you did, but it's in you. It's in you. This evil is in you, and that's what Christ is all about, because Christ comes and lives in you, then becomes Christ in you, the hope of glory. But there's no hope of glory in you if you're still thinking like what? You're still thinking in the flesh, stinking thinking, doing stupid. And what God wants you to do is to read the Word of God, study the Word of God, memorize the Word of God, and then pray the Word of God. And then the power of the Holy Spirit will come in and help you change the way you think so you make better decisions, right? And you make better decisions, you start thinking differently, and life, your life becomes something where it says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And all of a sudden, what do you do? By doing that, what are you doing, guys? You're hugging the vine. John 15, you're hugging the vine. If you're hugging the vine, what are you doing? Now you're going to see what we're going to talk about today. When you hug the vine, which we just sort of went along introduction there, but as we hug the vine and we learn that there's a plumb line, there's a difference between right and wrong. You understand? In our country, that's why we're having a problem because none of the kids, you know, basically nobody tells them that it's, it's, did you know, think about it. I heard this the other night. Did you, it is, God says it's, it's an evil thing to lie. Did you know that? Now, a lot of kids don't know that. They figure everybody lies. And the people make funny about the politicians. They lie, and these people lie, and then the teachers lie. And every, everybody lies all the time just to get whatever they want. They lie. And they think it's appropriate. And the, and the better they back up their lie with all these things, and they think they're really smart. But God says everything that you do, a lie, that's evil. And it'll come back to bite you, okay? And that's what our nation is based on lies. Now, we're all these lies, constant lies all the time. And it's coming back to bite us, okay? So now what God is saying, he's saying here, listen. Therefore, since you know Christ, 
And Jesus has done all these things for you. He's moving to the next level, which is, how are you going to respond? And you then are going to die to self and live for Christ. That's what it says. You're going to be a sacrifice. You're going to sacrifice those things that you normally take for granted. You've done, you keep doing whatever, and you, you're going to have to sacrifice those things. Now, my life, that's been a process, all right? When I was 30 years old, I did this, and when I did this, and I did that. And there are things that I did when I was 30, 35 years old that I never thought was sinful, and I thought I was okay, and I was loving the Lord and doing things. Then when I was 45 years old, I, there were a lot of things that I just sort of, they just moved out of my life because I, the Lord helped me understand those were not appropriate. Then when I was 55, 65, 75, they're, they're just a process of God working on me, trimming me, you know, trimming me. He's got the trimmer out because I'm hugging the vine and I'm, he wants fruit to come off of me, right? And that's what he does. So here's the thing. Now we're looking at the fruit. How's the fruit processed? How does it happen? How do you and I listen? How do we learn? How does it come together? So watch what he says here. He says, do not conform to this world. In other words, the logic of spiritual darkness, don't let that dominate how you think and how you make your decisions, okay? That's number one. Then he says, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will, his good, and his pleasing and perfect will. In other words, this is a minor detail. So listen to this. Do you want God's will for your life? This is a big question. You see, if you don't want God's will for your life, which a lot of us, including myself, I fight that all the time. If I'm going to do everything God's way, then what about me? When do I get to do it my way? And if I do it God's way, it doesn't seem like it's going to be as much fun as it could be the other way. Do you understand? It's just like a guy sitting there ready to take a drink. You know, and I'm not saying he's a drunk or anything, but he's had one drink and he's got another one. But he wants to do that. And one more, and he says, you know, I, and I really, you know, that first one sort of got my taste. And it, 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 always one drink always means that the best, the best one's the next one, right? Right? But the Bible says, what? Take it easy. Moderation. Don't get close to getting yourself not in control. And when that drink controls you, or the other things that walk by, the frilly little things, you know, all the stuff that controls you, got to have a bigger boat. Got to have that car. Whatever it is that you got, the things that are in your mind that are going and floating around, you need to remember what's God will for you. And a lot of people don't even want to say, what's God's will for me? What is God's will for me? Have you thought about that? Well, Gene and I have been studying this passage for a long time, and it's in um, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, and this is what it says God's will is. Rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now, if you take that apart, and you say, how in the world could you rejoice always? Because everything is going, you know, out of control the wrong way. Well, you can rejoice because you know that God loves you, and you belong to him, and you're bulletproof, and you're going from life to life. I rejoice. I'm thankful for that, aren't you? Are you thankful for that? You could be in the hospital. You could be on the street laying in there, or somebody you love. You, you can rejoice that they know Christ, that you know Christ, okay? Rejoice always. Pray continually. What that means is that you and I have an open line of communication with God. That means we're hugging the vine. It's all about Jesus Christ. Everything we do, say, or think is about Jesus. And if we do that and we think that we're hugging the vine, we're in constant prayer. That means we're just having conversation. That means that what, what a conversation, well, let me describe a conversation with God. Pray continually. It's when your mind is constantly rolling over with every thought. And by the way, you think all the time. Did you know that? You don't stop thinking. You go to bed, you sleep, you're still thinking, okay? Brain activity, you're moving along. So the idea is that you train your brain to constantly be rolling back and forth a conversation, whatever comes into your mind, it filters through the word of God. It filters through what Jesus said. It filters through who you are in Christ. The, I see that walking across. I say, oh, gee, she's doing the best she can with what she's got. Jesus died on the cross for her. He loved it. Lord, I pray for her. And then I'm out. it's gone. I have, the thought's gone. It's gone because God and I were, I was in prayer thinking about what he wants me to think about, not what I want to think about. 
By the way, I don't get credit for any of it because I, I want to do all these things. I want to there. I really want to do these things. But that's me in the flesh living by the flesh. That's Romans 8. We're going to get there. Though I live by the flesh or I live by the spirit. I have to choose. You have to choose. Now, how do we do this? And what is it all about? And what does it mean, these gifts? Now, look what he says here. It's by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourselves with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. This is really important. God is the one who gives you your faith. Did you know that? This is one of the things when I was growing up as a, as in, in my Christian walk, and I began to learn, and, and it's just taken the, oh my gosh, here, because I just wanted to be a man of faith. I wanted to do better. I wanted to do this, and I didn't, I didn't want to do it. I wanted to do it. I didn't want to do it. I wanted to do it. And where was I going to get the faith to, you know, to step forward and do it? It came from Jesus. Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith, uh, Hebrews chapter 12. Did you know that? I mean, that's so exciting to me. That means that in Ephesians chapters 1 and 2, where it says that we didn't do it, but God did it for us, that the gift of salvation is that he gave us in our hearts and souls through the Holy Spirit, the faith, the faith we need to turn to Christ. So that none of us, this is one of the weird things too. You see Christians, I don't know if they say it or not, but they think they're better than the non-Christians. You hear me? Christians think they're better than the non-Christians. But in the reality, what did God say? Everybody's the same. We're all dealing with the same issues. We're all the same thing. We're all going to live here for a period of time, and God's going to give us what? And we're all going to go through what? All kinds of tragedies and difficulties. And life's difficult for everybody. You're not exempt from that. In fact, but Jesus says, if you know me as your Lord and Savior, it's going to be more difficult for you than it would be for everybody else. Because you're having to look to me and to what my will is versus what the world wants and what you want. you got a conflict. And if you don't walk with Jesus, I'm not saying people who say they do, but if you don't walk with Jesus, you don't have a conflict. Now you just have the normal problem. And then when you have a real problem that comes along, then you run back to Jesus and say, hey, I'm a Christian, Jesus. you got to cover me and get me out of this. And the answer is, by the grace, and, the, the, and this is the word grace, is unmerited favor, but the faith that is, what, given to you, your portion of faith is how you step out. Because remember what we talked about, when you hug the vine, Jesus, then Jesus will provide and produce the fruit. Not you, but Jesus as a gift to you, okay? So what he says here, listen, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, or rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So this is, he's going to give your body as a metaphor, and he's talking about all the things that are happening, but here's the deal. Don't think of yourself more highly than you should, because whatever you have, whatever gift, came from God. And that is called grace. Grace, unmerited favor. Anything you have is unmerited favor. You can't take pride in the fact that you are, have been so successful that God has given you the gift of generosity. You can't be so prideful that if God's given you the ability to speak and to teach the word of God, that you're some kind of a special person. Do you understand? Now, the good news is I know you guys well enough, and I've never allowed that to happen in our environment because I want to keep this more like a football team. You know, we're all in the locker room together, okay? So I live my life with you, with Dave, every day. I pray every day. I make sure. I pray every day for JJ and those boys, every day. And now I got Jim. I got you on the thing. You're not getting away, okay? Brian, I told you, you're on the list, okay? Fabrice, you're going to be there. We're going to do this. We do it together. Do you understand? We don't allow each other to get out of control. We don't allow each other to get to that place. Because you already know, if you're around me, you see that. I was just talking to Bobby Taylor. He and I have known each other for a long time. And we played the golf together, and we did business together. We did all these things together in Bible study. And I can't hide from Joe Woodard, okay? You understand? I can't hide from the people because that's who we are. It's a gift. 
You can't take credit for it. You can't stand up and, oh, I'm, you know, I'm better than this and whatever. You don't go there, guys. You don't go there. And the reason you don't go there, because when you go there, you're leaving what? You're leaving the protection of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, when you do that. You're going out on your own. So here we go. He says this, verse 4. For just as each of us has one body with many members, these members do not all have the same function. This is really critical because you find all kinds of people thinking, well, look at you don't have the gift of this, and you should have this gift, and you should have this. Everybody has the gift that God wants them to have. You're not the one who chooses which gift you're going to have. Did, did you understand that? You don't decide you want this gift or you want this gift. or you, but The fruit of the Spirit is what I'm, I'm talking about. This is the essence of the fruit of the Spirit. What you do is the fruit of the Spirit is the fruit of the Spirit. So that is one thing. That's different than the gifts. The fruit of the Spirit is what God's doing through you, through the Holy Spirit, and he's working that out in your mind. Then the gifts come with those fruits of the Spirit, and those gifts are where you are, you're blessed with what I call the, the uh, grace gifts, okay? Unmerited favor, whatever gift you have. Now watch what it says here. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to the other. So in other words, whatever gift you have, you are to be using it to do what? To benefit the body of Christ. So this is the idea of people who say, remember what it says in Hebrews chapter 10 about we should not stop meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing? It is very difficult to get here. Right, Dave? Really difficult to get here. JJ, it's really difficult to get here. It really is. I, I Look at you. I know you guys. I know how difficult it is. And I was just thinking about that when Nancy was helping me get out of the house and get all the stuff and make sure I didn't leave something, you know, and to the point where she's standing there, you know, pushing the garage door down so I can zip out of there and get where I'm supposed to be. It's difficult. You understand? And the reason that we have to remember that our job is to take whatever God's given us and to give it to him, and then to do what? Now watch, and then give it to those we have fellowship with, to those we're near. Joe Lucini is not here anymore. We're going to have an event for Joe Lucini, and I'm praying that every one of you guys will come. And I, I know you'll have conflicts. I know you may not be able to make it. I got it. But we want everybody to be there. We want a bunch of guys. We need four or five guys that are who knew Joe and talked to them and have some to, to stand up and talk. Because his family, there's not much family there, okay? So it's so weird, not weird, but it's so awesome to walk into the to the to the hospital. And there he is with the tubes, and he's not there basically. And to walk over and pray over him and kiss his forehead and tell him I love him and and just to be there and then step away. And then she's there and her son is there. And nurses walk in and out. We talk come back, and within a half hour, 45 minutes, I'm gone. Then they come back when they need to pull the plug and all these things. Now, do you think that that, that when I was 25 years old, that that was something I was thinking about that I'd be doing? Huh? That when I was even 35. And then uh, Dennis is not here, but one day uh, there was a guy who played the piano, and he got... Um, really bad, uh, you know, uh, the sugar disease, what a diabetes. And they start cutting off pieces of body. And he ends up in this place. And then Dennis and I looked at each other and we said, well, you know, we ought to go over there and pray with him or something. And I remember going and I remember doing that. I said, where is this coming from? This is not me. I, I, I care about me. I want to go play golf. I want to go make a deal. My gift is to play golf. My gift is to... Uh, whatever, to make deals. That's my gift. And then, you know, I thought maybe I'll just make a lot of money. I remember before the, when I, I've done this, I, I was looking at the time, I think that we've done this group now almost 40 years. So I remember the first 10 years and it was no, Mike and I, I remember we were doing okay. And I, in the first 10 years, if somebody needed some, I never asked anybody for any donations. I never asked anybody to help. We never asked anybody. We didn't have a, a ministry put together or anything, nothing. I just go and somebody came, I'd write a check. I just figure five grand here, 2,500, whatever, 10,000 for the roof in Uganda. I, Mike and I, I remember, it, which is, it's just money. We'll make some more. It's no big deal, right? It's gotten a little more of a big deal lately. 
But the real out, it wasn't a big deal because I was like 30 years old, 35 years old, and I I just go out and make another deal, you know, just pick another orange off the tree. So what ends up happening is that all of a sudden I said to God, I said, Lord, why? And then things got too big or they got, I, I wasn't making money, I guess. And we had a problem. I went to this guy who had been in a group for like 10 years, older guy, very wealthy. I, of all the guys, I said, Lord, I, I got to ask for some money. So I figured I'll go to the easiest one first, right? Because I didn't want to ask everybody. I went to him, talked to him about the whole thing. And he said, no. <laughs> I, gosh. I said, Lord, this is not me. This is not my gift. This is not where I'm going, you know. Just give me the money. And then I had a long prayer time. I spent some time praying with the Lord. I said, Lord, it's really easy. Because I had deals. I could see how it could happen. I said, Lord, just I'll make five, six million dollars a year, Lord. And then I'll just take a million and we'll deal with that. And we'll have all the money we need to do the ministries we need to be. And I'm fully ready to do it. I'm committed to it. And now I was a big hitter at that time. I think really high. I mean, I want to get in the numbers, but they were pretty good. Randy was back around that time. He knows what I'm talking about. And then, you know, Tommy knows. And then all of a sudden, my income starts dropping. My deal, you know, I didn't make that big. And I lost that deal. Then I lost that deal, you know. And all of a sudden, I'm just scraping along, you know, borrowing money, living, doing whatever I could do. And the Lord said, no, you're not the one. And we started this, and we went out. And then all of a sudden, he had me doing this, that, and the other thing. So I had no idea what my gifts were. Do you understand? I was just working my way through the process of being faithful. And then I did this, I did that. And I'll be very candid with you. It, it's been, it's like digging that ditch. You know what I mean? It's, I got to keep my eye on the plumb line and not give up no matter how hard it is, okay? And that's the gifts we get. Whatever gift you have belongs to the whole group. Now, some of you guys have the gift of encouragement. It's so wonderful. I get encouraged by people and it's just a blessing, okay? Some of you guys have different gifts that you have. And, and it says right here, listen to, and when it says prophesying, that means telling people what the word of God says, telling people what God says. That's what that means. That's what we're doing right now, okay? And teaching. I'm not really much of a teacher. You know, there's a different group. That's a different type of, of a gift, okay? So well, let's go through these for a minute. So in Christ, many have that. It says, verse six, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. So it's according to the grace of God. These are grace gifts. You don't earn them, you don't produce them. Like I told you, I had that example. I wanted to be have the gift of giving, okay? I wanted that. I thought it would be great. It's given each to us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy. That's what I'm supposed to do. If my gift is to take the word of God, read it, study the commentaries, and then stand up here and give it to you, that's what I'm supposed to do. That means I'm supposed to be here every Wednesday. That means I can't get, and my wife, we're going to have our 54th wedding anniversary. I was thinking about I really can't get in a plane and take her someplace. I just can't. Why? Because I won't be here Wednesday morning. And I can't do this and I can't do that because I'm older now. So I can't just run off someplace and do something and come back because things don't work the way they work. So it's not the same because I have what? I have my gift and I have to do what? Because my gift is to help and to love others through the gift that God's given me. So that becomes my assignment. That means that my entire life, now listen to me, everything I do, everywhere I go, my kids know that Tuesday night in my house is what? Tuesday night. Tuesday night is not when anybody has an emergency. Do you understand? Now, I'm, I don't want to get into this, but that, that's like a curse. I mean, we, it's Tuesday night is always when something goes bad, you know? Trip to the hospital, the kids do this, the grandkids can do that. But the point is, Tuesday night, why? Because dad's got to go to sleep. I got to be asleep by 9 o'clock-ish. You get up at 4.15 and 4.30, okay? Why? Because I don't want to walk into this room, now listen carefully, without praying for you, without praying for you, Lynn, and your ministry. I didn't want to go. And you over there, making make some deals, okay? And David and David and your son David and your business and David and, you know, and, and Chris and Susan and, Brian, now I got you, you know, I, I don't want to come in here without Andy and Amy. I, I just don't want to not come in. I don't want to come in here not prepared to love David, who's been with me all these years. You know what I mean? And Teresa, you know, the pain and, you know, what we were talking about. And Jimmy, I, I you know, I think about that. And, and, I, and obviously, 
Every guy in here, okay, I look at you. See, guys, our gifts are not given for us. They're given for us to use those gifts to those in our lives. And that's when it is Christ in you, the hope of glory. All right? Are you with me? Now, let's go through some of these other gifts. It says, uh, in accordance with, oh, and in accordance with your faith. In other words, you practice. Now, this is interesting because we, we all have certain gifts, but guess what? Some of us are just barely at the edge of even understanding what our gift is, right? All right? And some of us are just beginning to do what? To exercise our gift. And God says, don't worry about it. Don't be uptight about it. It's accordance to the faith given to you. That means that the grace of God is he gives you faith to, to do your faith, right? So you may not be the number one guy in your group of gifts. You may be way down here starting off. Don't worry about it. Don't think of yourself like, don't think, oh, what a loser I am and that kind of thing. No, just keep doing what you do. Just keep on moving on. Practice it as you go along, all right? Seriously, think about it. You think about JJ, about your gift of encouragement, the way you go around and the guys you talk, and all the people you know. You probably know more people than anybody in, you know, in Orange County, and they know you, okay? And the encouragement you give those guys, bro, bro, you know, this, whatever, all the stuff you do, okay? Yeah, what's up, bro? Yeah, all this stuff. And so, you, you know, realize you just walk out and you just wander around and going down the street, you're encouraging people just by showing up. That's why I always make a big deal. I go, JJ's in the house, you know. It's because there's something different about the room when JJ's in the room, okay? It's, sorry about it, JJ, but that's it. You have the gift of encouragement, okay? You understand? It's important to remember that. And you, and you only use it to the faith given to you, right? To the amount of faith that you have to exercise your gift. So think about it for a minute from that perspective, okay? And I have to do the same, by the way really important. And um, before I get in trouble, we're running out of time. So I'm, you know, I'm going to keep from hurting myself here right now. So it says, verse seven, if it is serving, serving, and you guys know what that means, serving. And a guy who serves all the time, you know, Dwight, he's serving every, he, he's, he's got this group of the veterans and he serves them no matter what. He's serving the new guys that are in down in Pendleton, He's down to bar barbecues, and, and I think of Joey. He does that whole thing, you and those guys, Joey, and that team. You guys are down there doing all that kind of stuff. And, and you know, you're all as excited, Dwight, when you pray for somebody down there and you come to find out they had the experience you had. Remember that young fellow? His father had cancer and, you know, the whole thing. So you're out there doing that. You're serving all the time. That's what you're going to talk about with, in your uh, foundation. You know what I mean? Those who served us, we're going to serve them, right? And what was your worth it? You were worth the, what does Billy say? You know, he, he went in three wars and he said, but you were worth it. You think we got a bunch of guys running around waiting to go into the Marines and or the army and to come out so that they're going to go out and give their lives because we're all worth it. That's one of the problems we have right now in the United States of America. We're not worth it because we've turned away from that, which is right. We've turned away and gone down a path that's not real good. Does that mean we give up? No. It means we exercise our gifts. That's what God gave us gifts. Now, before you go, before you run out, if it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then encourage. Then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. You, you know, leadership is not easy. And Lord's given me a lot of leadership positions, you know, do things. And a lot of people want me to come and lead stuff. I get people coming and I, I have to sort of vary off because I can't divert from this group, okay? But you need to lead and do it diligently. Not, not for yourself, but for others. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Whoa, showing mercy. Now there's one. Touches my heart. But if I can't, if I don't show mercy to the people that come into my life, I cannot be a spokesman for the Lord's word. I cannot serve him as I should if I can't show mercy. And Jesus said, I always remember this one. I was talking to Pete about this. We were talking about it. If I, if all these, if I have a problem or a, something happens to me, 
It's a great opportunity because I can then show mercy, right? And Jesus says to me, if you will show mercy, then he will give me mercy. Do you understand? Now, I want to talk about the difference between mercy and grace, and we'll close. This is really critical. Mercy is when you do not get what you deserve. Do you understand? You do, you're not penalized or, or you're not put upon or punished as you deserve. Do you understand? That's what mercy is. And without mercy, without God first giving us mercy, mankind, there would be no place for his grace to come. Do you understand? Because grace is unmerited favor. All right? So that's why in the Bible, a lot of people just, mercy and grace, when they talk about the use of the word grace, when they should use the word mercy, is because if you notice in the Bible, it says mercy and grace. It doesn't say grace and mercy. Usually, it usually says mercy and grace. Because mercy comes first before the grace can come. So that you have the mercy. That's why it's called the mercy seat, right, of, of, of Christ. That's why we come because we don't deserve to come, but because we come because Jesus did it all. The, the, the grace is Jesus, and the mercy is the Father didn't whack us and get rid of us before we got Jesus. Now, that means that none of you can be taken pride in your gifts, your salvation, or anything else. That's why it says at the top, at the very beginning, do not think of yourself more highly than you should, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. That's verse three. Critical. Now, what we're doing today is really important. What we're doing is we're hugging the vine. You understand? Now, as you exercise your gift, guess what's going to happen? In that what, uh, in that lane, let's call it a lane, in your lane, your lane is encouragement, right? Let's say in your lane is in giving or encouragement or whatever it is, or teaching or preaching or whatever. The, the fruit of the Spirit then will come and move out of you in your lane. You see what I mean? So if your lane is to serve others and you're out there serving food and helping these people, doing the barbecues, you know, that you're doing or taking the old guys over here and 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 honoring them and all the stuff you're doing, during that process, what happens? The fruit of the Spirit is manifested, and you don't even know it. It's not something you do. The fruit of the Spirit is just growing off of the vine, and you're the vine that's connected. Do you understand? You're connected. You're a branch. I'm sorry, the branch connected to the vine. And you're a branch, and, and this branch has got, as this branch grows and it, and it uses the gifts, that the fruit of the Spirit just comes off of you wherever you are, whatever you're doing. And that, now listen carefully, is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So let's pray. Lord, Father, thank you. Thank you for what it means to love each other, to be in this room. I'm so blessed to see all these guys here today. I've been praying for them. It just makes my heart, it's just such a joy to see them here and to pray. Lord, I'm praying for, for John in Romania. I'm praying for the guys in Uganda right now. Oh, my gosh, Lord, all the things we need. And in Pakistan, Lord, we haven't been, oh, Lord, I pray for them. And in Nepal and India, and, and I pray for all of us here and our families and our businesses and all these children, Lord, and the grandchildren. They all need to know you. They need to love you. Oh, Lord, there's so much, so much to bring. And But I, I do know one thing, Lord, for sure. You love us more than our sin. And you sent Jesus, and Jesus, you came and paid the price, went to the cross, took the wrath upon yourself and died for us. And you rose from the dead and walked out of that grave on the third day. You defeated the power of sin and death in lives, and you made us born again, children of the loving Father God in heaven. And you've given us your Holy Spirit. You've written our names in the book of life for eternity. I, I know that for sure. That is my foundation. And so that is my rock. And even though the winds are blowing, the storm is going, I have my rock. So I'm going to pray now for these guys. I pray that you'd bless each of the guys here, anyone who hears this message, that you'd bring your mercy and grace into their lives according to your good and perfect will. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Such a blessing.